Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Eldon. I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. With me is Dalton Grimes, and Hello, we got a everyone. special treat for you all tonight. We're going to be talking about triggered abilities. Hey, you uh, you did that last week. I think we should do something else instead. Oh, oh. So we were going to talk about triggered abilities, but we're going to talk about replacement effects instead. Hey. You see what we did there? Uh, that is exactly how replacement effects work. You'll have something in the game that is going to be trying to do something, and then there's going to be a replacement effect that steps in right as that thing is about to happen and says, nope, we're going to do something else. And he's going to come in with his own topic that he wanted to talk about. And he was really excited about these replacement effects. I am too. Uh, critical critical thing for you to understand as a judge. And one of the more advanced and difficult rules topics, in my opinion. I think they're actually more difficult than continuous effects. This is Dave Elton's well, personal opinion that this is the hardest rules topic. That's because you are like a layers freak well, when it comes to layers knowledge. Like, real, real talk right now. Continuous effects, which we will be talking about in a future episode. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. Continuous effects, like, once you know what the rules are, figuring out how they apply to real situations isn't actually very okay. difficult. I can uh, see that. Replacement effects is actually a lot more stuff that looks like it should work one way, but actually works a different way. Mm -hmm. But they are a lot of fun, and there's something that players deal with every time that you play a game of Magic. Yeah. Um, well, maybe, maybe not every time. There's like oh, some, every some time. difficult ones. Oh, every yeah. time you deal with replacement effects. All right. If you're on the play. Yeah. If you draw a card. Yeah. I, I'm really good at magic, so I get to draw a card. <laughs> <you know? laughs> All right. One versus one. Sorry. Let me clarify here. One okay, versus one. Okay. You're on the play. Are you drawing a card? Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. Replacement effect. Bam. Right there. Mm -hmm. Everyone uses them. Interesting. Interesting. That's a good That's a good example of it. Um, and uh, it's definitely something we're going to talk about. So how would you know a replacement effect if you saw one? Well, if you uh, go into CR, there's actually a list. Mm -hmm. And you know how we love <laughs> bulleted lists on this, <laughs> on this channel here. They're so great. Goodness me. Goodness me. I get excited when I see bulleted lists. So let's take a look at some stuff. How would you know a replacement effect when you saw one? So what would you look for? There are a couple different things you can look for. Um, as we've talked about with triggered abilities, they have those words of when, whenever, and at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Replacement effects can work pretty similar to that. So there are sort few, of. <laughs> a, few, a few certain words that you can look for. Let's, <clears throat> let's just say that there, there might be uh, one or two words uh, additionally that... Uh, <coughs> The triggered abilities have three. There's there's a couple more with. with there are quite a effects. few. So what's but what's if the you first find one? Them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that is. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be upfront with everybody. If if you like, you know, gave me a pen and paper and said, okay, Dave, you're gonna write down every, uh, you know, every type of replacement effect there is, or else we're gonna, you know, stomp on this Big Mac and throw it in the trash can right in front of you. Well, is that really what gets you going? I, I mean, like, that would be a really serious, like, you know, there's there's starving people uh, like me at lunchtime, and uh, it, it would be very, uh, Big Mac is a delicious and nutrition-ish, <laughs> nutrition-ish <laughs> nutritious source of nutrients. <laughs> okay, I, I couldn't, even, couldn't even say that with a straight face, but maybe, maybe it's my guilty pleasure. What are you going to do? So, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't write them all down. No way. Um, all right, I could try. I, I could. Oh, boy. Okay, if, if I had, like, infinite time and I had access to gather so I could, like, look up every individual magic card, I could probably do it then. But, like, the, the important thing that I want everyone to carry away from this is do not try to memorize this. Instead, just think about what types of stuff is a replacement effect, mm -hmm. and then you can use that information to help you, uh, you know, determine whether it is or isn't. So, the okay. biggest one. The most obvious the... one. You know, the one the everyone end all replacement about. effect is instead. So you see the word instead on a card. That is a replacement effect. Here's an example. You've got the the K ball ritual, which is not the card that many people were thinking. Probably uh, nobody in the chat guessed it. Unbelievable. You checked. Good. Uh, yeah. Nobody. All right. Nobody. Nobody. Oop, let's let's double check. Nope. Nobody had mm. it. Uh, unlucky. So, Sorry, friends. Yeah. That that says the word instead. So if there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, you add five black instead and it says the word instead 
uh, right in between pool and if. I, I was gonna say I know I checked these all before we went online, but you know, dumber stuff is happening. Very glad. Here's here's another great one. Uh, you know, if you would draw a card while your library is empty, you win the game instead. instead. Right. So those those are examples of replacement effects that use the word instead. Uh, now, interesting, uh, important thing to note, like some cards uh, are going to have replacement effects, but the word instead isn't going to show up on the card because it actually shows up in the CR uh, if you look at, like, for example, regenerate, the, the text for regenerate has the word instead written in it. So that's kind of a sneaky, sneaky one, but... Uh, it caused a lot of fun at the M25 draft at my store. Did it? Did it really? Yes. Oh, yeah. We had to... Myself and the other judge at the event had to explain replacement effects basically at every match. Well, I mean, it's just kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So that's that's another thing. Uh, flashback is another example of this. You know, that this one at least has, like, your reminder text. But the reminder text, and they're usually really good about this. Uh, usually, usually if you see uh, a word that has rules meaning in the CR definition of something, they'll have that word in the reminder text, too. So almost all triggered abilities that are keyworded have at win or whenever in the, the reminder text mm -hmm. for that. Almost mm -hmm. all activated abilities have a colon in the reminder text. This does not. Flashback does not have the word instead written in the reminder text. But I promise you, if you go in the CR, it will say if it would leave uh, or if it would be go to the graveyard, graveyard yeah, then exile, exile it instead. instead. And it actually is if it would leave the stack, uh, mm. exile it instead. And that, that okay. might come up at a future point. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if I was devious enough to put that example in there, which I would. All right, so instead, big All right, what's, so what's, what, other, what other words would we look for in, in a replacement effect scenario? The next biggest one, and the one that I've kind of already thrown out there, is skip. We're skipping. We are skipping. So let me this, let me introduce you to my boy, Eater of Days. Oh, boy. I remember this is when I first started to play Magic. So, like, I was, I was you know, your stereotypical just starting to play magic person and mm -hmm. i saw whoa four mana nine eight <laughs> well, i am working on probably the goofiest modern deck with this guy so i'm very excited for it so my friend eater of days when he comes into play skip your next two turns yeah so that that would be a replacement effect the skip mm -hmm. skip means uh if something would happen do nothing instead. Mm -hmm. That's basically how skip works in magic. And that, that actually is in the CR. There's there's a rule that specifically says that's what skip means. The skip is a replacement. Uh, and, and it's not just turns. Uh, you can also skip uh, stuff steps. like steps or phases or, you know, fate stitch some stuff out there. It's hard there. to get 10,000 steps a day if you're skipping them. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So then, then we've got uh, effects that change how a permanent enters the battlefield and this is like a broad category so we're going to break it down some so here are some specific templates you can look out for this permanent enters the battlefield with uh so for for example you've got our, our old friend tajuru stalwart uh if anyone's ever played uh bfz limited and, and seen these guys so it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one count on it for each color man that was meant to cast it so that that would be an example of that um, you know, you, you've also got uh, stuff like uh, uh, as this permanent enters the battlefield, which would be like mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite magic cards, True Name Nemesis. Oh boy. Uh, so as this enters the battlefield, you choose a player. Uh, or, or maybe like uh, Sutured Ghoul, as it enters the battlefield, you can do some complicated stuff. That's a replacement effect. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is kind of a, a tricky, tricky one because sometimes this stuff is not going to be in the uh on the card itself so jace actually does have a replacement effect as do all of his friends yeah all, all jaces yes all jaces uh have a replacement effect all walkers too um and it's it's the the, the loyalty. loyalty yeah so the there's a thing in the cr that says a three under the loyalty symbol is treated as saying this enters the battlefield with three loyalty counters on hmm. it uh, and so obviously Why that wouldn't would, they just print that on the card because that would be a lot of extra <laughs> text on the magic card so yeah that is uh, another type of replacement effect uh this is this is one of my favorite ones is clone clone <laughs> only uh, this art we will be see, we will be seeing this one a lot so we had to make sure we got the best art for you mm -hmm. and uh, clone is uh is something that says this permanent enters the battlefield as uh, mm -hmm. That is another another thing that you can look for. Uh, this this I I had a lot of trouble 
uh, finding cards that weren't copy effects. And here's here it is. Here it is, boys and girls. This is Molten Sentry. Uh, when it, as, it, as it enters the battlefield, oh you flip a coin, and it enters the battlefield as a 5-2. That one just made five. me scratch my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... This, this is what we care, and we care enough to come up with the top quality examples of all of these things. Just for, for, for Just for you. Uh, okay, this permanent or objects enter the battlefield, dot, dot, dot. Uh, so, for example, our, our friend the guild gates, uh, Azorius guild gate enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, for, for objects you enter the battlefield tapped, uh, that, that would be another, another thing, uh, like maybe the, the Orb of Dreams. What what a what a sweet magic card. Why does no one play this? Well, it costs three mana and it well, doesn't yeah. do anything. Let me tell you about Amulet of Vigor. Or or rather it does nothing. Let me uh, tell you about of Amulet of Vigor. Some of my favorite uh, player tricks. So yeah, those those are all of those that, that we've just talked about are examples of effects that change how a permanent enters the battlefield. So that's that's like a broad umbrella category. Mm -hmm. So we've got instead You've got skip. You've got changing how it enters the battlefield, and then you have one more, one more special category, and, which uh, everyone knows. Oh goodness, yes, all of uh, us. A very, a very common thing that comes up all the time is uh, uh, things that, as it is turned face up. So that that is another uh, a final, and, and of course that that's going to round it out. So those are the different types of replacement effects. Any replacement effect you encounter should say something like one of these templates i'm trying to think if all of these were used in masters 25 uh I believe, we also have problems i don't believe morph. the morph ones are uh, morph was an m25 well but... well was one of one of the ads oh, was one of the ads face up i don't believe will bender or is that a that trigger? is a triggered ability mm -hmm. yeah. okay um so that that would not qualify so okay that is all of the different types of replacement effects. So we're gonna. So now you're done. You know them. Yeah, we're we're gonna Congrats. we're gonna do a little quiz here. Uh, is it a replacement effect or not? So here's here's one. Yes. Oh wait, they can't see it yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Draw four cards. You skip your next turn. Okay. I was just guessing too. I just. It, it was right. a yes. It was a yes. Oh, actually. Look at me. Ooh, so which so which good. part of this is a replacement effect? Uh, the meditate. You're you're supposed to sit there and play your game, but instead you're just going to meditate. <laughs> okay, that's that's good. I, no. I actually like that one. Uh, um, you skip your next turn. Yeah, so you're supposed to be playing, and you skip that part of the part where you're playing. So you skip your next turn, and you just meditate. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly meditate. how it goes. All right. Here's here's one uh, a, another card that is well known for having a replacement effect. Uh, so which part of this has a replacement effect? If a card or token would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. Yes, yes. This is a replacement effect. The first thing where you exile graveyards when it enters the battlefield is not. And that is a true ability. Sort of like uh, this other similar, very similar card to Rest in Peace, Planar Void. Mm. And uh, with, with this, it says whenever a card is put into a graveyard, <laughs> you exile it. Have you read the flavor text on that guy? Uh, planeswalking isn't about walking; it's about falling and screaming. Oh, Zantia, oh. such a such a such a what a philosopher! Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is a triggered ability too. So you you have to read the friendly cards and be very careful about what they say because a, a slight wording change is definitely enough to cause a uh, you know <laughs> change in what the right answer is. Mm -hmm. And so that is uh, another another example. So here's so here's to clarify one. that one is not. That is not a trigger, or not a, a replacement, replacement effect. effect. It is most certainly a trigger yes. ability. All right, how about how Ooh. about our, our guile friend here? I don't think I've ever seen guile. Who boy? Guile can't Let be blocked except by three or more creatures. Is that, is that a ability. replacement effect? I don't think so. No, it's not. What is that art doing to what Okay, is... I'm, I'm getting distracted here. Yeah, well, yeah. All right, if a spell or ability you control would counter a spell, instead, ding, 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 got one. Exile that you spell and you may play that card without paying its mana cost. Yeah. What? Yeah, your counter spells get souped so you up. just take them all. When it's put into a graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it. All right. So we yeah. got triggers. Yeah. So we got rule changes. Got lots of we stuff, got replacements. Right? right? Man, we could just do a whole show on Guile. So the, the bottom ability is kind of interesting because that is not a replacement effect. That is a triggered ability. It says the word when Guile is put into a graveyard. And uh, obviously, you know, they would never print a card that had a very similar effect but it was a replacement effect right like sure david 
Gosh, guys. All right, so, so you shuffle it into your own if library. If you instead. ever went to a GP in last 2017, year, yeah. Uh, you probably have seen Progenitus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this guy right here, or gal, what well, I don't know. He's the soul of the this world. This Progenitus here, um, if you'd be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal him. Ho ho. And shuffle it into its owner's library instead. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say Progenitus is male because if it was female, it would be Progenita. And, uh, you know, as, as a Latin scholar. That is true. So... That's that's my official evaluation of that one. I can totally get behind that. All right. How how about another? And this this one is almost certainly male. I think. Uh, a Kiki Jiki. 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 Yeah. Does Put this... a creature token into play that's a copy of target non-legendary creature. Creature token has haste second at the end of turn. Boy. <laughs> I'm the worst poker face ever. Really? <laughs> why why are you so excited about well, this well, one? David? Does this have a replacement effect? So, this guy, Kiki Jiki himself does not have a replacement effect he comes in he's a 2-2 two -two haste yeah. however that ability there oh boy that ability also does not have a replacement effect still not a replacement effect but but uh and, and it's pretty obvious right like like this is an activated ability and then the thing where you sacrifice is a triggered ability and then like it's a copy effect that's that's not that's not a replacement of how it enters the battlefield because that's what the base characteristics is. That's that's what the instructions that create the token is. Mm -hmm. So no, none of this stuff is a replacement effect. The reason why uh, I, I included this one as an example is because it actually illustrates really well how replacement effects work. So if you if you look at the, the activated ability for Kikiji here, what it'll say is uh, you sacrifice it at the end of turn, mm -hmm. right? Now that's a delayed triggered ability, but it, it also sets up a thing that happens later in the game so in the resolution of this activated ability the game sets up for a trigger ability for down the future and this is the same way the replacement effects work in that they have to exist before they apply right so just like with kikijiki where we set up the triggered ability in the time when this ability resolves and then it applies later on at the end of the turn uh, a replacement effect has to be the same way. We have to set it up first, and then it applies later. And this is something that a lot of people who are who are kind of newer to how replacement effects work kind of get tripped up on, because it is kind of unusual. You, the the stuff has to apply. Usually, stuff applies when it applies. It it doesn't usually have to get set up first and then apply. And so that's a an important thing to think about when you're when you're thinking about replacement effects. So that's that's why I put uh key g he on on here also it's one of my favorite cards uh i have a foil key g he that i opened in in a pre-release and so that Ooh. that was actually the first money card that i uh the second money card that i opened og kamigawa yeah og kamigawa. Ooh. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's the og one all do right. you still own it yeah Ooh. i sold my first money rare <laughs> sell out and sell out that's so, fine. How, how about this? Uh, right. Dark you, Steel you Sentinel. Effects on, what on a character. character here. You may cast a spell anytime you can cast an instant. Nope. Nope. Vigilance? I don't think so. I'm going to go nope. Nope. Damage and effects that say destroy. Don't destroy this creature. If its toughness is zero or less, it's still put into its owner's graveyard. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is that a replacement effect? So, I'm seems, giving questions seems here. like it might. You would think it... You know, if damage would destroy it, instead it doesn't, is how you might make sense of that. Yeah. But I'm going to go with no. No, it's not. Uh, it, it does not have any of the, the templates that we were talking about earlier, so you can tell it mm -hmm. isn't. Uh, if you look up in Indestructible in the CR, that will it will not have instead. It will not have any. What Indestructible does is it changes the rules of the game so mm -hmm. that specific state-based actions do not apply to the, the thing that's Indestructible. Mm -hmm. So that, that in fact, does not have any replacement effects. Yep. And that's where a lot of this comes in, is in identifying cards and abilities, replacement effects, all these different things, is that you can't get caught up in this is similar to that interaction yeah, yeah. so they Ruling must be the same or rule by analogy no good. correct um so indestructible you might say oh well instead of dying it just stays there well that opens a huge can of worms when you start to introduce that rules lingo yeah. into this definition yeah if i say vines of vastwood gives a creature hex proof well not really it basically does the same thing 
But like I said, can of worms. Vines of Asswood does what its text says. Yep. Indestructible does what its text says. Don't try to make your own abilities. Okay. So now, now that we have some, some experience identifying replacement effects, we're going to take a look at, at how some inter interactions involve in replacement effects. Awesome. Work. Let's do it. So, okay. Uh, this, this is a sweet magic card. Nope. Not a replacement effect. <laughs> Got it. Done. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> So okay, this this is smallpox, and I'm gonna cast a smallpox. What a deck! Uh, what a what a fun and interactive deck. I think is what he meant to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I love smallpox. To be completely honest, now I love it. Let's let's say that that Dalton has a, a, a Loxodon Smiter in his hand. Always. Okay. I have so, at least four in my hand. Well, my opponents always have at least four in their hand whenever I play a discard spell. Mm -hmm. So can you discard Loxodon Smiter? into play and then sacrifice it as the creature that you sacrificed for smallpox so i've actually really liked loxodon smiter for a long time mostly because you know when you start out you see that it's a a three drop four four that can't be countered like oh my goodness what value i mean like that's that's very aggressively costed like back in back in the oldy days of magic it'd probably be like a six mana four like six or seven mana four probably seven four. mana and it'd be like legendary and like the ability would be like if it would be countered you have to discard a spell or something that's that's yep. what those abilities would get translated into and now it's just nice rare uh, yeah. pretty bulk too yeah, if i'm not mistaken it's not not seen a lot of play as, as of yet see i'm thinking about a great so can, can you do it can great you... blood braid into loxodon but anyways so if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard loxodon smiter put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard yes so this is something we haven't necessarily talked about, but replacement effects don't use the stack. That's correct. So we don't have to put Loxodon Smiter onto the stack, its replacement effect, while Smallpox is active. Yeah. We just do it instead. Yeah. So we take the action of discarding a card, and we choose Loxodon Smiter. Loxodon Smiter doesn't need to be forced to discard. You can choose it and still works. Yep. So if we choose to discard Loxodon Smiter, in that line of smallpox text, discard a card, we replace that with put it onto the battlefield. Yep. And, and with a card like smallpox, with the four requirements that it has, we do these in order. Yeah. So you so see the discard card happens before the sack. I creature. discard a card, and then next in the text comes sacrifice a creature. So we have already replaced that discard with putting the smiter onto the battlefield. So smiter, no smiting. Yeah. So he, he does get sacrificed. Okay, he can. So, so you, you could, yeah, you could sacrifice something else if you want. Yeah. Uh, if you got to protect something. Yeah. If you really wanted to save your, uh, you know, whatever other card you got. Okay. So that's good. Now, how about our friend Corsair of Kerfix? Right. Now, let's let's say I have got a Corsair of Kerfix. Okay. And let's uh, say you do. Yeah. So I'm gonna play a land from the top of my deck. My top card of my deck is going to be a Howled Fountain. Ooh, Bant. Okay. How exciting. So when I, when I play Howled Fountain, do I know what my next card is going to be when I'm deciding whether to play it tapped or untapped? So in this situation, Howled Fountain is being played from the top of the library, and it is considered to be the top card of the library. Yes. Um, Howled Fountain has a replacement effect, as do all of the Ravnica Shocklands. And that is, as Hollowed Fountain enters, you may, may pay to life. Um, this is a replacement effect affecting how this permanent enters. So, um, one of the what what causes the dilemma here is when I am playing Hollowed Fountain, do I get to see what the other card on top of my library is? And for a lot of players, you might see them just say, "Oh, well, you know, I'll pull up this Hollowed Fountain, flip the other card over, and." then play it yeah because that's that would make sense it, it's that's, easier that's you're already over here by do. your it's already over <laughs> here by your library so just go ahead pick it up flip the other one over so you don't forget and play it yeah, yeah. um unfortunately this isn't the correct way of doing it yeah. um as hallowed fountain is a replacement effect it replaces how this card enters and until hallowed fountain enters the battlefield officially it is still considered to be on top of the library yes so and the replacement effect happens before uh hallowed fountain enters the battlefield mm -hmm. part of the process of putting it on the battlefield is applying this replacement effect so 
logically it would have to apply before Hallowed Fountain entered the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And that's when this choice of whether or not to pay the two life is made. It's made as that replacement effect applies as part of applying it. Yep. And that's part of the process of putting Hallowed Fountain onto the battlefield, which means it's not on the battlefield yet, which means it's still the top card of your library, which means you can't see the next card down. And I think that these shock lands actually do a great job of illustrating that a oh my goodness, that a replacement effect needs to be determined before something occurs. Because with Hallowed Fountain, it wouldn't make sense if I put it in tapped and then untap it as part of the replacement effect. That would seem very strange to me. So you actually have to determine whether or not that replacement effect is going to occur before it enters. Same with all the others. You need to set up and determine that replacement effect before anything actually comes of it. Yeah, now one one other really interesting thing uh, to note would be, let's take a look at the original printing of, of one of these shock lands. And uh, you can see that it uses the word instead in its text, whereas like uh, the, the Return to Ravnica ones, they're all worded the same way. I just picked two different ones, so it'd be easier to, to switch between here. But you can see that this does not use the word instead in its text. And uh, the, the templating, at the time these were originally printed required the word instead to be a part of the text in order to signify that it was a replacement effect. Now we have added in the CR the, the extra replacement effects about how stuff enters the battlefield so that instead is no longer needed to make this into a replacement effect. So that's some yeah. interesting rules and history trivia for yeah. those of you so it's not that are interested in stuff like that. It's not that they determined that the replacement effect would be different, it's just they decided that they didn't need to explicitly state yeah they they changed which templates they could use to signify a replacement mm -hmm. effect it used to just be instead i believe um, yep or or maybe just instead and a couple of other ones so okay right, you... i'm done asking i'm done answering I'm okay gonna, i'm gonna let you answer some of all this right I, I can do that that's fine. and i feel like you are the kind of player who would enjoy uh some dredge trolling people so ooh. You'd say you're a troll? Yeah, I, I would right. be. I, I well, would be. Golgari Drave Troll, the bane of banless yeah. and not banless yeah, and then banless it's such, again. Such a problematic card uh, that only became a problem after they printed Cathartic Reunion. But but Let's the real problem why. the real problem was was the Golgari Drave Troll that could dredge six. Yes. That's, that was the real. The real. It's not the enabler. <laughs> yeah. It's the payout. So. so okay, what, what about Golgari Drave Troll? We'll say that. My two friends, Amy and Nicole, Nicole are playing. It's always Amy and Nicole. That's that's a judging for the win uh, staple. No, that's that's who it is. It's always Amy and Nicole. That, that's a brand staple. Yeah, um, so Amy has a dread return in her graveyard. Yeah, lovely card. Great. It's it's got some uh, stuff that comes up with that KCI we talked about earlier. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and she also has a Golgari Grave Troll. Yeah. So, ooh, I like that art. Anyways, yeah. not to get sidetracked here. Um, Amy's looking to flashback her uh, sure. Sure thing. Her dread return, and she's going to target this Golgari Grave Troll. Right. Now, she has done some great shenanigans that have led to only those two cards being in the graveyard. Yeah. But she has three Narc Amoebas on the battlefield. Yeah, or any creature or whatever. Narc Amoeba is a staple dredge, dredge creature. Uh, so, anyways. How big is it going to be? How big is Golgari Grave Troll? So we'll, we'll take a look at this uh, Grave Troll again. We'll bring it back up on screen for you. First of all, Dredge is a replacement effect. Uh, you replace drawing a card with Dredging 6 and uh, returning it to your hand. Gotcha. But uh, there's, there's another... <laughs> that was the replacement effect. There is another replacement effect that, that happens with this card, and it's the, the one that says it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter for each creature card in your graveyard. Now that is a really interesting replacement effect, and it's interesting because in this specific situation, where is Golgari Grave Troll when this replacement effect is applying? It's in your graveyard. Which means that it counts itself as part of the uh, number of creatures that, that you have in your graveyard. So that's and kind that's of why it was banned. Oh, yeah, that, that one too. Totally that reason. So, uh, obviously, the, the three Narc Amoebas are going to count as well due to the fact that uh, in order to cast Dread Return, you have to sacrifice them because that's the cost for, for flashing it back. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be in the graveyard by the time it's in the stack or on when it's on the stack so you're definitely going to have them in the graveyard when you're counting up for a golgari grave troll which is when that spell resolves and you're going to count troll also so it's going to be four four mm -hmm. 
Uh, also, regenerate uh, another another replacement effect. So uh, actually, three different replacement effects. All of, all of Golgari's Grave Troll's abilities is a, is a replacement effect. So it's it's really it's really replacing a lot of stuff here. All right. Any 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 other uh, interesting questions that you'd like to to ask me, Dalton? I do about, about how replacement effects work. So I got this uh, fun card in my Eternal Masters draft. <laughs> is it's it called uh, is it is Sulfuric it really Vortex? Fun fun for some. Fun for me on your turn and you on my turn. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, so if you're a Vortex, it's it's a great card. Yeah. If player would gain life, that player gains no life instead. Aww, so here aww. we go. We get, we've got some uh, replacement effects going on. Okay, okay. And I am hoping to swing in at you with my creature. Probably, uh, uh, you know, what kind of creature you got? Smiter. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. We, we've already discussed it. It's one of my favorites. I don't know. You, usually, usually with uh, when you're invigorating. But anyways, it, it might be a, a a poison creature. You know what? Zadahedron Grinder. <sighs> ha. Anyways, I'm gonna invigorate it. Yeah. I don't have three mana though. No. Right. So I'm just gonna uh, pay the alternate cost. Can Can you do that? Well, let's let's have a look. I, I don't know rules lawyer <laughs> David Elden. Oh, can man, I do I've, that? I taught you well, Don. So if you look at this card, it says if a player would gain life, that player gains no life instead. In addition to other so text. So there's no reason why a person uh, could try to gain some life. They just won't be able to. But the game doesn't know that this uh, is going to happen when you're paying the cost of Invigorate. So it is 100% legit to play Invigorate for the alternate cost, knowing full well that they are going to have the cost get replaced by something a lot less useful. Uh, but the game still says, hey, look, we paid the cost. You did the thing that the cost says to do, even though the, you know, there might have been some replacing going on and the, the thing that happened in the game wasn't the cost that you tried to pay. Mm -hmm. But you definitely did try to pay the cost, and <laughs> the cost got replaced by something else. But the game still says that's okay, so that definitely works. And you definitely can pay the cost of me gaining three life, which is going to get replaced by me gaining zero life, and you taking four more damage. A, a for effort. Gold star. Yeah, a for Take effort. my 8-8 smiter. All right. Now, now here's, a, here's an interesting thing. There's another card uh, with a similar effect to uh, this, the Sulfur Vortex where that does not work. So this is Havoc Festival, which says that players cannot gain life. That means it's completely different. Because now there is a rule saying that it is not legal for you to try to gain life. So when we try to cast the Invigorate for its alt cost, Havoc Festival is going to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're, we're not gaining three life here. No, no bueno. The, the party police. So the, the fun police get called into the station, and that one does not work. Uh, because, again, the, the wording on the ability is slightly different, and that changes the answer completely. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's that's pretty sweet. Uh, I, I gotta admit, those are some some really excellent magic ha, cards here. Take that. So uh, what what else what else we got? All right, All right. why don't you hit me? Okay. So this is one of my favorite uh, favorite rules questions. Like like not not even not even like replacement effects. Like rules questions. This is one of my favorite rules questions that I've made up, and I've made up one or two rules questions in my day. Uh, so this is great. Yes. We got we got rest in peace. We're okay. resting in peace. Great card. Um, and you're gonna play some card. You know some spell. Don't don't really need to know which spell it is. Uh, but I don't like it, so I'm can, lapsing can I share the crowd. What what spell is it gonna be? Uh, quest for Ula's Temple. Okay. Uh, so that's perfectly fine card. <laughs> um, well, maybe maybe not from a <laughs> gameplay perspective, but. Uh, I'm lapsing it because I'm really threatened. When you have to read a magic card to know what it does, you you definitely want to want to counter that spell. So, yeah. what zone is Quest for Ula's Temple going to be placed in? Uh, so I control Rest in Peace, and you play a spell, and I lapse of certainty that spell. Where does that spell go? So lapse of certainty. Looking at that counter that spell. If that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of onto that player's into that player's graveyard. So I'm looking here and I see, bam, great, replacement effect. It I sure see is. this, it's awesome. And then I look down at my board state and I remember, hey, wait, didn't I have a rest in peace out? Yeah, no, it's my rest in peace. Oh, it's your rest I, in peace? I, control I say, hey, didn't, didn't you have a rest in peace? Yeah. If a card or token we put into a grave or food, we're exile it instead. Yep. So at this point, I have a card that is countered. 
And when a spell is countered, it is put into the graveyard. Yep. As per normal rules. Yes, that's how it works. So Rest in Peace wants me to put this card into the exile, in, into the grave exile. Um, <laughs> but Lapse of Certainty wants me to put it on top of my library. Yeah, so we got two replacement effects. They both want to affect what zone that card goes. So anyways, um, that's making me scratch my head a little bit. But ultimately, I'm going to say, ha, I know this one, David. I'm a judge. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to put it on top of my library. All right. Uh, so, I mean, you can do that. That's definitely a legal play. Yeah. Um, what What about, what if you wanted to exile it, if you didn't want to play the Quest for Rewards Temple again? So, um, this comes into something that we haven't really talked about at this no, point no, yet. This is this is new. Uh, so you've probably heard about this. Oh, before. You're gonna steal it? No, of course not. Okay. Um, this this is this is your slash my slash your question, and uh, so so I will I will let you be the the punchline deliverer. But uh, I can punch you. No punchline. Oh. Uh, so so this this does involve some stuff that we might not have have thought about before uh, for this for this question. So. Mm -hmm. What what is it? So what happens have, when two replacement effects try to do different things? So we have what I will re affectionately refer to as the uh, replacement layers section. Yeah, the replacement effects layers. It's, it's not really layers, They're but not. it works very similar to yes. it. Um, which I already said, association is not necessarily a great thing. But anyways, it's a it's a useful mental analogy. Here. Yes. So when you have multiple replacement effects that want to apply to the same event, there's a specific order in which you apply them. Yes. Uh, the first is you apply um, self-replacement effects. Yes. Um, and what this is, is that it is a replacement effect that is not tied to a continuous effect, but to the resolution of a spell or ability that replaces it. So if you if you got an idea of, of like what what an example might be if, if somebody doesn't you know want to want to read all that rulesies, so I do not off the top of my head. What, what about lapse of certainty? I can't use the one in the example. Oh, oh okay. Well, if, if we can't if we can't use that one, here's here's another awesome uh, self replacement effect. Our our friend the elder cat. It almost says Elden. It almost says Elden Cathar. Dave Elden Cathar. Yeah, almost. So uh, with with this, when it dies, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. But if it's a human, you get two instead. And this is this is also not a uh, continuous effect, but rather it replaces part of what a resolving triggered ability does. And so this. But, but David, example. yes. How can it be self replacement if it's putting counters on something else? Uh, that's that's not what self replacement means in this context. So. What self-replacement means is that the ability changes something that it would do itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the replacement effect comes from the ability that's being affected. Yep. So this is Elder Cathar's ability, ability, and there is no other replacement effect but its own applying to this ability. Yep. So this is a triggered ability and a replacement ability together. Yep. So lapse of certainty in our example is our self-replacement ability. Yes. So uh, that means we have to pick first. Yep. And so if I see that these two are competing, I can look and see that Lapse of Certainty is a self-replacement ability and uh, Rest in Peace is not. Yes. So I must apply Lapse of Certainty first. Okay. So I just have one question then. Uh-huh. So I play Modern. Uh, I've played cool. Modern once or twice. It's before. a great format. Now I know that if if you have a... Do you know? Yeah, well, well I know this. I, a judge told me once... That if I have a Snapcaster Mage and I flash back some spell, mm -hmm. uh, and then my opponent plays a remand on that spell, uh -huh. that the spell gets exiled. It doesn't go to my hand. Yep. Okay. So is, isn't that kind of like in conflict with what we said just now? Like, shouldn't shouldn't it be uh, going to my hand instead of getting exiled because it replaced you know the remand is a self replacement effect? You're right. Um, remand. Shh is a self-replacement effect. Yes. Counter target spell, if that spell is countered this way, put it onto its owner's hand. So instead of putting it in the Instead, room. yeah. So Definitely we look at that effect. and that seems great. You know, we can tell and totally. David might say, oh, well, it's a self-replacement effect, so I must Supply apply it first. first, right? But as we mentioned earlier, flashback, um, though it's not printed on the card, uh, its relevant text states that if the flashback cost was paid, exile this card instead 
of putting it anywhere else anytime it would leave the stack. Yes. So remand self-replacement effect is applied first, um, which would try to replace um, the flashback card being put into, or sorry, which would try to put it into its owner's hand. Yes. However, the flashback card, um, its replacement effect will then apply. Yes. And send it to exile. Yeah. Just ships it off. So that is uh, a, an important difference because with the with the uh, the previous question, once we apply lapse of certainty's replacement effect, the event becomes it, it changes from put this card into its owner's graveyard to put this card into the top of the owner's library. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when Rest in Peace uh, wants to see if it can affect this event, it'll be like, well, I don't care anymore because the card's not going to the owner's graveyard anymore. So I can't affect this event since the, the ability I have only cares if cards are going to get put into someone's graveyard. Correct. Now with Flashback, even after Remand applies and changes the event, the remand uh, putting it into its owner's hand is still going to be something that the flashback exile ability applies to because yep. flashback says if it would be put anywhere else it, when it leaves the stack, instead exile it. Yep. So that that will still apply and it will still exile the card even though remand's ability tried to give it to you first. Yep, so basically the game is just going to see that remand wants to send it somewhere else and flashback is going to kick it out and say oh well i'm more important i have already explicitly stated this yep that's the official magic ruling that's that's exactly how it when works. i approach a table i say hey i'm gonna explain this to you really quick so reman says get out of here and uh snapcaster's like no you right. get out of here all right so so uh, obviously this uh you know, self-replacement so effects. I one. Obviously, these self-replacement effects raise another interesting question. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that question is, is there any other types of high-priority replacement effects that apply? Of course uh, not. Before? Uh, no. Well, yeah. yeah there, what? There, is. there are. There is. David, so, okay. do tell. Layer 2 uh, is... Layer. Yeah, so replacement effect layer 2 Yeah, is uh, a very special one. It, uh, so first, Did you say it's a special if, treat. If there are more than, if there are more than one replacement effect trying to affect an event, first you have to affect, uh, first you have to apply self replacement effects. Mm -hmm. And then you have to apply effects that would change under whose control an object would enter the battlefield. Now, if that seems a little specific, it <laughs> I, is. I feel like you have a very great example ready. Well, in fact, there's one example. <laughs> There <laughs> only one. This could date, only happen to once. date. There is only one card that has the ability to do this. Prove me wrong in the chat, but uh, at, at the time that I was thinking about it uh, a couple of years ago, and I don't believe that there's been any added since. Uh, this gather specimens is the only card that has the power of changing whose control a card enters the battlefield. Now, I want to I want to preface this with some uh, uh, some some other kinds of you know, some like disclaimers. So this is not an example of that. Commandeer uh, changes who controls the spell. So that is not a replacement effect. That is me playing a spell and then Dalton commandeers my spell. <laughs> so now because Dalton controls the spell, it enters the battlefield under his control. Now with gather specs, you get a completely different situation, which is it's my spell and it's entering the battlefield under my control, but gather specs, replaces that with it entering the battlefield under Dalton's control. So so spells that change who controls a spell or ability does not fall under this this type of replacement effect because those are not replacement effects. So that's that's kind of interesting. So that is the second type of high priority replacement effect. Mm -hmm. So so with that in in place, uh, I am going to play a primal clay. Now if you don't don't remember don't quite remember this uh, standout magic card from uh, ye olde days. And M25. And M25, because we're throwing it back. Mm -hmm. uh, here it is. So, as Primal Clay enters the battlefield, it comes your choice of a 3 3 or a 2 2 with flying or a 1 6 with defender. And boy, oh boy, is this a sweet magic card. <laughs> uh, well, for, for this question. So, obviously, the question is I play Primal Clay, you respond with Gather Specs. Mm -hmm. Who chooses? What type of creature it's going to be? Because because obviously now that I'm not going to get it anymore, 
Uh, it's not going to be a 3-3 anymore. It's going to be a 1-6 wall. Uh, would be my preference. Uh, now, now Dalton might have a different idea of what type of creature he would want it to be, but I think the one six wall would be the most appropriate for for a Traitorious Primal Clay. Oh, yeah. What, what do you think? Well, with Defender, I don't like that. See, maybe if it was a one six without Defender, and I could just invigorate it in. Like, right. who knows? So, so who's right? Who gets to pick? So, as we look at our layers. Yeah. I feel like Doctor Evil. Yeah, again, not not actual layers. We'll talk about those in a future episode. Yes. Um, so we look and we see that there is no self replacement effect here. No. So that we can check off our list. And then we come down to whose battle or whose side of the battlefield is going to enter. Yeah, the gather specimens layer. The gather specimens layer. It's like Trinisphere. Yeah, but the Trinisphere. Uh, the the worms of the Earth rule. Uh, there, there's a few magic cards that that have their own rules. So. As we look at our Gather Specs layer, layer, um, we're going to see that this needs to be applied first. So it was going to enter under David's side. I have decided to spend six mana to steal his four drop. Well, maybe, maybe I got like some more creatures that was, was going to enter the battlefield too. Who knows? <laughs> Yes. God, what a, what an awesome like I want to do that in legacy like, like oh, oh oh I'm gonna play show and tell ha 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 it'll be like well I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and gather some specimens it doesn't work as good though because they can just choose not to put something into play unfortunately it'd be a, a party pooper but uh, if it was me I would put the gristle brand into play under their control just for the style points I think you could have some fun with like a dubious challenge. <sighs> Um, anyways, so we'll get back to our topic here. So we apply that one first, and now the game has decided that Primal Clay will enter under my battlefield. Yeah. At this point, this becomes my choice. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, it doesn't have to be a 1 6 defender, it can be whatever Dalton yep. wants. It kinda, could be a kind of uncool. Kind of uncool, but uh, what are you going to do, I guess? <laughs> You're going to spend six mana for a four drop yeah i guess that's probably what i would do and a time walk your opponent i guess maybe i yeah, skip their whole turn probably yeah okay what what else we got any any other high priority uh replacement effects yeah so i've got a really awesome one um <laughs> with my friend clone all right please pull it up one, so everyone knows one of my favorite clones everyone knows these two goobers here with their crossbows and their pointy hats. Are we goobers now? Yeah, yeah, we're cloning. Cloning each other. Anyways, so I see that you have... No, I'm going to give it to myself. Okay, I have give yourself. Ball. Okay, you're going to give yourself the Mutable. That I've swung in right. with. And, so, uh, you know, Mutable, Man Land, just, uh, you know, yeah. nothing, nothing too exciting. It's here. pretty swell. So, you know, it's a it's a great so. GP card. I really want the play map yeah. if anyone wants to donate if, me one. If only, um, if only judges got the GP foils. If only. So, um, anyways, looking at this, we have my 2-2 two -two creature with all creature types, because this is super relevant. And my 4-drop clone needs to be a Mutavault. It has to happen. I mean, maybe you're short on lands. You need, you need more lands to play your 6-mana your steal or something. 6-mana. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to play my clone on an animated Mutavault. Yeah. So this Mutavault is a 2-2 two -two right yeah. now. Um, but David wants to run my fun. Okay, I, I am the fun police. You are the fun today. police, and I don't want you to have Thalia because she's too cool. No. But I'm gonna give you uh, authority of the, the consoles. consoles. The you consoles know? are creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Yes. Well, in this case, I am your opponent. Yes. So creatures I control enter the battlefield tapped. All right. So he's cloning his mutavolt. That's animated. Mutavolt. I have authority of the consoles. So ha! I get Does my creature. Does clone enter the battlefield tapped or untapped? So if you watched tapped. if you if you watched our uh, video on copying effects, which we haven't made yet, but you know if you're in the archives <laughs> and you're watching this after we have made it, then you know that when Mutavault uh, slash clone enters the battlefield, <coughs> it will enter the battlefield as a Mutavault, an unanimated Mutavault, because copy effects do not copy any continuous effects that are acting on a permanent that they're copying. So as a result. It's basically like you took the the clone to or if you, you you clone works basically just like if you took the mute vault to Kinkos and hit the copy button, and then that's that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like a mute vault, and you just have a mute vault enter the battlefield. Okay, so if clone enters the battlefield, it's a creature. So that would mean that authority of the consoles would apply to it. 
But if Mutavolt's entering the battlefield, it's a Mutavolt, which means authority of the consoles would not apply to it. And that's why we couldn't use Thalia for this example, because you know the, the Mutavolt would still be getting an end of the battlefield tap because it's non basic land. So obviously it would enter the battlefield tap. Oh yeah, that's true. So so would clone enter the battlefield tapped jerk. or untapped with with this uh, specific situation here? So good news, it's gonna enter. Yeah, untapped. Yes, and that is bad news. It's not a two two. It's not a two two. Not so, yet. Not yet. You have to. Enter. So this is our third layer. Yeah, the, the third layer is is of my favorite effects. type of replacement <clears throat> effects, copy effects. And this is the one that deals with copy effects yeah so so stuff that causes a permanent to enter the battlefield is a copy of another permanent that that is the uh the layer that, that we are talking about here and so as a result um you know the authority of the consoles is going to uh have creatures enter the battlefield tapped but that applies after uh, the clone copy because clone is a higher priority it is in a higher layer and as a result of that the authority of the consoles is not going to apply after the clone applies, so clone enters the battlefield untapped. And again, the creature entering the battlefield, you gain one life ability, it will not trigger due to the fact that clone is not a creature when it enters the battlefield. Of note, clone enters the battlefield as a copy of a creature, but it is still capable of entering as this land. Yeah. Based on the fact copy. that it copied a events. creature but has now become a land so chat if you are understanding this which i certainly hope you are let us know if you have any questions feel free to send them our way yeah absolutely. we want to answer all of them about replacement effects everybody in the chat send send all your love to us all your questions to us everything all your money, all your trades. Yeah, your... yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll put the PayPal and the, the Bitcoin donation links on there for next Ooh, time. we got high rollers with some Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. We'll we take Ether, too. Um, if, if you have that, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't want to set up for, like, every single cryptocurrency, but we'll, we'll hit you the major ones. We'll, we'll give you at least those. You can tap into some mana, too. Yeah, you, you, we, we'll take mana. No problem. Um, all right. So this is, this is you, might, you might be wondering why I brought this up on screen. This this it's amazing, quite a card. This amazing magic card. Hey, chat, want to guess? Essence of the Wild. Um, one, 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 I can't one, guess if you say it. One, well, I mean, we already it's it's already on screen. So oh people, yeah, you right. already saw it. So like one in the chat, if this card is awesome, and uh, if you've heard this rules question before. Two two in the chat, if if you don't read uh, some some articles and you haven't seen it before. Creatures you control enter the battlefield as a copy of Essence of the Wild. Yeah, okay. So 6-6, six, six, pretty good. 6-6 six, six or 6, sounds but, good. But uh, here's the problem, though. I have a clone. Okay. And uh, an Essence of the Wild. And you have a, a very powerful 8-8 eight, eight fusion elemental. Uh -huh. Now, obviously, 8 is a bigger number than 6. So if I have my way, I want my clone to be a fusion elemental. Yeah. Can I have clone enter the battlefield as a fusion elemental? So we'll, we'll bring up we'll bring up the author or the uh, um, essence of the wild one more time to to let everybody we we probably already seen clone enough times that we we never want to see that card again but uh, you know the, the essence of the wild is kind of sweet still right like it's pretty pretty cool magic card so this is a lot this is really sweet this um, this is another one of those questions that I was really proud of myself for making up oh you came up with this yeah. too oh, very nice I come up with like almost all of these um, like by myself. The, the, like, thinking about rules and, like, thinking about rules questions is, is one of my big things. Dude, I have tried, and it is difficult. It is. It, it, it's, it's a skill. Like, one of, the, one of the things that helps is that I've been playing for, you know, a lot. 10, 15 years. So I, I have an enormous number of, of magic cards that I've seen through, like, playing. So mm -hmm. stuff that sticks out to me is typically stuff that make good rules questions. So I have, I have a large library of cards that I can pull from at this time. Sure. So, it's, so it's a <clears throat> let's check our layers checklist. Yeah. So does this have a self-replacement effect? No. No, it does not. So we don't need to worry about that. That's right. Do, is this card... What was it? The, the gather, gather specimens. specimens. Yeah. Uh, no, this card is not gather specimens. All right. All right. So it's not that one. So next we go to layer three. Yeah. And that is the clone layer. Yeah. So I noticed something funny here. Yeah. You see? Essence of the Wild wants everything to enter as a copy. Yeah. 
um, clone also wants to enter as right. a copy. That's right. Who so gets this to is pick? pretty goofy. Who gets which? Which one goes? Which one goes first? So How you might know? think, oh, timestamps. No. Duh, there's, that's there's, a go-to. There's no timestamps. These there's aren't no time layers. Stamps. These aren't layers. This is this is replacement effect layers. Completely different. Exactly. There's no time replacement stamps. layers. Do not have timestamps. Uh, yeah. That is irrelevant. Don't do it. So what else would make sense? Well, uh, let's say they apply in the same layer. Um, affected player. Yes. Let's choose. Yes. So, so this is a little different than, say, triggered abilities where you do active player, non-active player. Um, instead, with replace, replacement effects, you do the affected player. That's correct. So That's it doesn't matter whose turn this would be on. Whichever person is having that clone enter, they will be the one who gets to choose as they are player. the affected player. Yeah. So affected player is like rules speak for the per the permanence controller if it's a permanent that's getting applied to you or the person who's taking the damage uh, if, if it's like a damage based kind of one. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically the, the controller of the thing that's getting affected is, is the, the affected player. So you might think, oh cool, hey so David, you, choose you get a choose, a, a right? Is a, a, a fusion element, right? Well, uh, I, I got some bad news for you yeah. as a as a judge, and is, some great news for you as, as an opponent. Yeah. So, uh, clone here is going to run into a little bit of trouble. Right. So David gets to choose. Okay, yeah. which he wants to apply first: Essence of the Wild, or what was the other guy? Clone. No, the other card. Fusion the element. Idiot. Fusion element. Clo yes. Clone is the thing that has the replacement effect, though. Yes. Well, I was thinking of what else it would yeah. be. So. David gets to choose, is he going to apply Essence of the Wilds first and turn it into an Essence of the Wild? Or is he going to apply Clones first and turn it into a Fusion Elemental? Yeah, well, uh, obviously we want to end up as a Fusion Elemental. We want to end up as a Fusion Elemental. So, so let's let's start by applying Essence of the Wild first and Clone last. Great. Right? So, so that makes sense. We dive into Essence we want of the it to Wild. be last. Yeah. So we dive into Essence of the Wild, and this is going to enter as a copy. Yeah. But... If it enters as a copy of our Essence of the Wild, it is no longer a clone. Right. And will no longer have clone's replacement effect. Oh, uh, so that doesn't work. So okay. that doesn't work. What if we do them in the other order? What Let's do them in the other order. order. Just for fun. Just so we're going to have clone apply happens. first. Yeah. And it's going to become a fusion elemental. Yeah. In theory. Yeah. But then Essence of the Wild applies. Well, that's lame. So it doesn't matter what choice I make. Uh, either way, it's going to enter the battlefield as a, a Essence of the Wild, mm -hmm. not as a Fusion Elemental. So that's uncool, but I guess, you know, we, we had some other ones that would... Just watch out, David. If you wander too far into the wild, it may take you for its own. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, it took the Fusion Elemental for its own. That's, that's all I know about. Okay. So... That is that is a lot of stuff about replacement oh effects. There's you know too may, much. Maybe maybe it would be interesting to see uh, a, a question where uh, it, it does make a difference what what order we apply stuff in. Mm -hmm. So like let's let's <clears throat> why well do you want our viewers to get a good experience? I mean we, we kind of touched on it a little bit with the with, with the um, uh, rest in peace plus. Uh, lapse of certainty question. Sure. Except the the player didn't actually have a choice. Yeah, we got a few. So so let's let's use let's use another one. We'll we'll say like anger. Anger is a good one. So with with anger, the gods uh, does three damage to each creature, and awesome. creature dealt damage this way would die. Uh, exile instead. Check. Cool. Replacement okay. effect. Got okay, it. Okay. So that's a replacement effect. Um, let's say we have another one, uh, like, like say, say our friend, well, Progenitus is a bad example because like it wouldn't be dealt Protection. damage that way. Um, but let's see, there, there's, there's another card that has that same like tactical ability maybe. Maybe not. Um, we'll, we'll think about, we'll, we'll find out soon. We'll think about that. Here's, here's another card though. Uh, I, I have Wheel of Sun and Moon out. Completely, completely great magic card, obviously. So mm -hmm. if a card would be put into my graveyard from anywhere i'll reveal it and put it on the bottom of my library okay okay so let's say i play anger and like my creature dies okay right, so th this would be an example of, of that rule actually meaningfully interacting with the game right because we have wheel of sun and moon's effect and we have uh anger of the gods effect both of which want to affect what zone my creature gets put mm -hmm. into so anger says we want to exile it 
Wheel of Sun and Moon says that we want to reveal it and put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, uh, none of these, neither one of these is a self-replacement effect. Correct. Uh, now, it might look maybe like Anger would be, but look what it's replacing. Uh, it's, it's not replacing something that Anger of the Gods does by itself. It's replacing what happens later on down the road, not part of Anger of the Gods' effect. So because Anger isn't replacing something that it does itself, it's not a self-replacement effect. It's just a regular replacement effect that is part of the same spell as uh, something that does something else. And it, mm -hmm. it, it just so happens that the earlier other part of the spell is typically going to cause the replacement effect to apply, but it is not necessary that that is the case. And the replacement effect is actually replacing a stay-based action mm -hmm. in this case uh, most of the time. So, okay. This is not a self-replacement effect. Wheel of Sun and Moon is not a replace self-replacement effect. Nope. The, neither of them are <laughs> gather specimens. specimens. Neither of them are copy effects, which means they both apply in layer four, the all the other replacement effects layer. And so as a result of that, the affected player in this the, case the, the bulk rare layer. <laughs> the, bulk, the bulk rare layer. I like that. So in, in the in that case, the, the affected player, which would be the, the creature's controller, mm -hmm. is gonna choose which one is gonna apply first. So if we apply anger first then the creature is going to get exiled and wheel of sun and moon isn't going to apply to it anymore mm -hmm. if we apply sun and moon first it's going to get put on the bottom of my deck and anger isn't going to apply to it anymore mm -hmm. so whichever one gets applied first is going to win and yeah. this is the way it's typically going to work uh in, unless there is a case where one of the replacement effects is in one of the higher priority layers this is how it's going to work if, if there are two replacement effects that want to affect what happens in the game Yep, and this is because, as we mentioned before, once the first effect applies, the other one is no longer pertinent to what is going to happen. So in this case, Anger wants it to die and go to the graveyard to be exiled instead. Um, but the card is not going to go there. It's going to go to the bottom of the library. So at this point, Anger no longer cares. Yep. So, have you got any other stuff that you wanted to talk about with uh, with replacement effects or anything else? Maybe someone in the chat might have uh, some questions or comments that mm -hmm. they'd like to, to see us address on air here. Mm -hmm. So, I don't. No? Okay. So, you're going to skip. I'm going to skip your my... Ability to, to... What a forced segue skip that my was. second main comment. <laughs> second main commentation staff oh no that's, what, what, that's what are the rules on? for streaming for streaming what are my steps yeah, we need phases? the cr for streaming guys anybody anyone pull that up someone give me a link in the chat <laughs> any any questions or any uh, other comments from the chat uh we will welcome those otherwise we would love to see everybody coming out here mm -hmm. and it was awesome presenting for you guys on replacement As effects we hope always. all of your questions on replacement effects got answered if you have anything else you'd like to hear about or anything else you'd like to know about with replacement effects, please email judgingftw at gmail.com or tweet at us at judgingftw. Yes. But until next time. If you can't join us live, we're always happy to answer the questions oh, goodness, you have yes, later. Goodness, yes. Uh, but uh, that's going to be all for our show tonight. Thank you all for watching. This has been Dave Eldon and Dalton Grimes. We're signing off. Have a great night.